you've seen the movie Field of Dreams, right? I mean, it's one of my favorite movies. And if you haven't seen it, you probably should. Uh, so do you mind if I spoil it for you a, a little bit? I, I know it just came out in movie theaters 35 years ago, but perhaps you haven't had a chance to see it. So here, here's the story in a nutshell. So Kevin Costner's character is Ray Kinsella, and Ray is out working in his fields one day. He's a farmer, and he hears a voice that says, if you build it, he will come. And build what? Who will come? It's a big mystery. And then Ray's got to figure out all this stuff. What What is the voice asking him to do? Well, turns out he's asking him to plow up his cornfield and make a baseball diamond so that Shoeless Joe Jackson and a bunch of his buddies who've been dead for 50 years can come back and play baseball. It's a great movie, trust me. Okay, but the point is this. At the end of the film, after Ray had done all this stuff for these guys, uh, there's a big question. And the question is, what's in it for me? See, all the baseball players are going back into their, you know, the, the otherworldly place where they've come from. And they invite one of the other characters to go with them. And like, Ray's like, wait a minute, I want to go. And, and they said, no, you're not invited. And he goes, why, why not? I, I, I've done all this stuff for you, and never once have I asked what's in it for me. And then Shoeless Joe Jackson says, what do you want, Ray? And he said, what's in it for me? And the reason why I share you this story with you is because I think that a lot of times, that's the same mentality that we have about worship. People go to church because they wonder, what's in it for me? Now, that's not to say that, you know, there's not anything in it for you at church. Definitely there is, right? This is the place where God's word is proclaimed to you. This is where you receive the very body and blood of Christ in, with, and under the Lord's Supper. This is where we, we sing hymns and, and we sing psalms uh, together as the community of Christ. Absolutely, there's stuff in it for you when you go to worship. But that's not the only reason why we go to worship. Instead of thinking what's in it for me, we should hear the admonition of Paul in Galatians chapter 6, where he says, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Worship is a communal experience. God brings us together as a community, not only so that we can be fed and nourished by Christ, but also so that God can work in and through each one of us to serve and love our neighbors in that place. Now, the author to the Hebrews puts it this way in Hebrews chapter 10. Let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting to meet together as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. See, here's the point. Your church is God's gift for you. Through the church, you have opportunities to interact with brothers and sisters in the faith and to encourage one another. Through the church and through your presence in worship, God is working through you to serve your neighbors there, and he is working through all of them to serve you. Being part of God's church is essentially important to your identity in Christ. 